Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. I stopped the previous video a little bit abruptly because I didn't want to really get into uh, exercise number three, task number three. It requires a bit more background information, I felt like, so I wanted to give that information before we just jump in and make some changes. So it asks us to make some sweeping changes to the item detail page. And so if you take a look at the item detail page, eventually what we want here is a, a list of ingredients in the center column and then directions in the right-hand column. And as the instructions in the lab point out, there's a lot of work to do. We're going to start by considering how to render that list of ingredients into our page. And to do that, we're going to implement a type converter for the ingredients. Now what exactly is a type converter? Well, it allows us to change or convert types, obviously. So for example, we've seen this at, uh, already, even though we didn't realize we were working with a type converter. Uh, it allows us, first of all, to uh, use simple types in our XAML, like a string value, but then convert them on the fly to a strong type uh, at time of compilation. And so you might take a look here in the grouped items page.xaml. We've looked at the stack panel before. And in the past, we've simply set the orientation equal to a string of either horizontal or vertical. Um, but behind the scenes, that attribute orientation is actually an enumeration, a strong enumeration in the windows.ui.xaml.controls.orientation enum class. So this has uh, to do with the dirty work of converting the string to horizontal or vertical into the enum value, either orientation.horizontal or orientation.vertical. And there are many built-in type converters in the Windows Runtime API to allow our XAML to use strings that represent complex objects. Additionally, there are two custom type converters that have automatically been added to this project. You can see here in the comment folder, there's a Boolean negation converter and a Boolean to visibility converter. The latter shows you how to use a Boolean value, either true or false, to represent visibility.visible or visibility.collapsed, respectively. And these are examples of converting from XAML uh, uh, to a strong type, a string in XAML to a strong type in the framework, but we can create type converters that go the other way as well. Taking a strong type and then converting it into a different type like a string, for example, for use in our XAML. And so that's actually what we'll be doing in this example. Uh, we'll be creating a type converter to change our recipe data items ingredients property, which is currently defined uh, as a observable collection of strings. And so we're going to take that observable collection of strings and we're going to do a translation of it into just one big long string with a bunch of line breaks in between each ingredient. And doing that with a type converter. So the type converter that we're going to build will take each item in that collection and then use a string builder class. Do you, you, you probably remember the string builder class, right? We talked about it in the C-sharp fundamental series. It provides an efficient way to append strings together, a memory efficient way to append strings together. So we're going to simply add a carriage return between each string to provide kind of an aesthetic separation between each of the ingredients that will display on our page. So now with that in mind, let's go ahead and create that type converter using the instructions inside of our lab. So it says the final task is to modify the item detail page. So we're going to uh, run the app, tap fried dumpling. Clearly can we see we have a lot of work to do? Yes. All right, so what we want to do is add a new item in the common folder and we're going to call listconverter.cs, okay? So here we're going to just go to our common folder. We're going to right click and add a new class. And we're going to call this a listconverter.cs. Great. And then the next step is to replace the file's contents with this code. All right. So I would like to type it all out if I had the time and you had the inclination, but I doubt that either are true. So I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to do exactly what they say. I'm just going to hit uh, control A on my keyboard to select all and control V to paste what I have on my clipboard. And we can see that we have the code pasted in nicely. Now, just like I said before, there is 
obviously some uh, plumbing that's that's working here. Notice that list converter implements this I value converter. Just out of curiosity, I'm gonna take a look at these other built-in type converters and see that they all indeed uh, uh, inherit from I value converter and they all have this convert and convert back, okay? So clearly this contract, this agreement of implementing an I value converter interface means that we're going to have to implement convert and convert back. Okay, very cool. Now in this case, convert back isn't gonna do anything. It's just going to throw the uh, not implemented exception. But if we were to run the con convert, we would take the, uh, the value that's going to be converted. In this case, we're casting it to an observable collection of string because that's what we would expect the input parameter to be. And then we're newing up a string builder and then we're gonna iterate through each item in our observable collection of strings and just append them together, adding a carriage break between, a carriage line between each one of the items using uh, the append, okay? And then finally, we'll return the to string of our string builder. It's as easy as that. All right, so let's continue on here. So now open the item detail page.xaml and add the following statement to the page.resources section near the top to declare a list converter instance. All right, so I'm going to copy this. So here we're just going to declare an instance inside of our page.resources. I'll just put it here at the top to declare a new instance of our list converter. Now we have a little blue line that says it doesn't exist. That might be sometimes because we haven't built the solution yet. So let's see if we build it, if, if Visual Studio will recognize it now. All right, and it does, awesome. All right, so next up, it says scroll down on the item detail page and find the flip view element whose name is flip view. And so what is a flip view? It's that, uh, that layout element that allows us within a single group to go between each of the items inside of the group, each of the recipes in the group, and it puts those little right and left arrows to either side of the page, okay? And so we wanna replace the data template inside of the flip view .item data template with this one, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, copy this code out. And let's make sure that we understand what we're changing here. We're changing the data template, okay? Which seems to be quite a bit of code. So let's scroll down. So here's our flip view. And here's our item template. Now, you know, interestingly enough, we've seen the data templates uh, defined in the, uh, in the standard styles.xaml. But in this case, the author didn't put this template in the standard styles. He defined the standard style, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the data template right in line. So just another approach since uh, apparently this would be the only place where this style was used. So I'm just gonna highlight everything here related to our data template. And I'm going to replace it. Now what exactly are we replacing? And so if you were to compare what we have currently on our clipboard that we've copied from our instructions with the way that this page is defined, there are gonna be some dramatic changes. Now, I'm not even sure that I completely understand the rationale behind the user control and then using a series of uh, a rich text block with a series of paragraphs to define the layout. I think it has to do with the fact that there could be a lot of text and it can go on for columns and columns and columns and columns off to the uh, right hand side because this was intended I think to be more uh, to be used as like a news story or a news article sort of layout um, and we're using it for decidedly different purposes giving it more structure I guess you could say I deleted it and now I'm going to paste in what we have on our clipboard and these are things that we've already seen before um, for example there is a uh, there's a scroll viewer and the scroll viewer will stretch the entire width of the panel and this will allow us to scroll off to the right hand side of any information that's inside of it and you might say well we've never used a scroll viewer before that's because the grid view and the list view have an implicit scroll viewer 
uh, and that's not explicitly defined. That's what allows you to continue to scroll off to the right hand side. Scroll viewer just says uh, it will give you like a virtual space even outside of the, the viewable space so that if any content flows off to the right hand side, if it was horizontal or below the viewable area, if it's vertical, then it'll give you a scroll bar along one of the axis, okay? So inside of that, we're gonna put a margin, I mean, I'm sorry, a grid uh, with a number of columns that you can see here defined. And now we're just stacking, uh, creating stack panels inside each of the columns. One for uh, our first column here will have the title and an image. The next one will have our uh, ingredients list. And then the third panel will have our instructions. All right, so continuing on then, uh, it says now we just need to simply run the app again and see the changes for ourselves. Okay, and so what we wanna look at is the layout for just one of the items and now we see it in greater detail, three columns. Um, there is no additional information that scrolls off to the right-hand side of the screen, so we don't see the scroll viewer in action. However, we can see how our uh, type converter works now. It took that collection, that observable collection of strings, and just made them into uh, a series of strings, each with a, uh, a line feed after it. It looks great, okay? And then, obviously, the directions uh, take the greater portion of the screen. Let's just, for fun, let me change it from uh, the size of a large monitor to the size of a tablet and see how that affects the layout. Okay, and so it still looks great. In fact, it, it even looks better in that view, in my opinion, because it just fills out everything really nicely. And so we're just flip using the flip view to navigate through. And uh, just you know, the flip view is kind of an interesting layout control. It's just like the grid view. It's gonna control how much of, in this case, the recipe data item will be rendered on screen um, and which properties of the data item will be displayed and the visual stylings and so on. And so there's a great quick start available which will teach you more uh, than we're able to talk about here with regards to the flip view control. And I've added that as a link here on a slide uh, and um, you should really take a look at this, this article. It's well done. Before we conclude, let's go ahead and go back into, go back into Visual Studio and take a look at the details for, uh, for what we've created here. In particular, I wanna pay attention to, um, all right, so we have an image. So, okay, the text block at the top, that makes sense, right? That'll have the title. The image, great stack panel below it that'll have the preparation time and so look how this works they use three text blocks one for some static text then another text block just for the for binding for data binding purposes of just the prep time you can see it's just wedged in there between two text blocks and then finally the word minutes is in another text block all right so if you need to uh, insert information and insert strings in between uh, dynamically in uh, in between static strings you use multiple text blocks make the static ones just go ahead and hard code the text property but with the ones that you want to change dynamically from database data or dynamic data you use a binding expression for that okay next up let's take a look at that uh, stack panel there's a text block at the top that has the words ingredients as the header Great, and then the rest of that is uh, another text block. They set the line height, I guess, to give each a little vertical spacing, each of the different the lines, each of the line breaks. And uh, notice that it's binding to ingredients, but it's also referencing that list converter. So the ingredients attribute in our the recipe data source, if we look at the recipe data item and we take a look at the ingredients, nothing has changed with regards to the ingredients. It's still an observable collection of string and we can still bind to it. We're just gonna say when you bind to it 
where are we here? We're, when you bind to it, run it through the converter first and then bind to it, okay? Otherwise, if we were to remove this and just say bind to ingredients, I'll just do this real quick. We would probably get an exception or we might just see the first item. I haven't tried this yet. Let me just see what it'll look like. All right, and see, we just get the name of the uh, of the type system dot collection set object model dot observable collection of type system dot string. All right, so uh, if you see that, you'll know that I you forgot to use a type converter. Now I just have to remember how I had that in there. There we go. Great. All right, and then finally in the rightmost column we have a scroll viewer, and inside of the scroll viewer a grid. So if we just need to scroll the directions, it'll scroll on its own if we had way too much text, for example, okay? Which, that's interesting. I'd love to see that in action, but none of the data that I've been able to see has enough data to make that happen. So at any rate, uh, but I would expect that, again, if there was just too much data to fit in the directions, just this rightmost column would scroll, your ingredients and item uh, view would still be, uh, still be there, okay? So we made some sweeping changes. We didn't write a lot of code. We were able to copy it, but still we were able to analyze it and understand what it's doing and why it's doing it. So in the next lesson, what we want to do is dive into the Visual State Manager, try to learn about more about how it works, more about visual states and the storyboard and the like. All right, thanks. We'll see you in the next lesson. Thank mm -hmm. you.